just been talking a lot about wall throws. Now we're gonna talk about the glide. What are two simple things you can do to get more out of your stand throw that's gonna carry over your full throw? And what's one thing you should completely avoid because it doesn't apply to the full throw? We're gonna talk about it in this video, so check it out. Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Airtay Throws Nation, and in today's video, what we're gonna talk about is some glide. In our last few series, we put up some videos and we've been talking about wall throws, and we're gonna get back and resume that series. We wanted to break it up just a touch, give you a little teaser, and give you some glide work to focus on. Now, one of the key things that we talk about with the glide, especially we talked about in our camps, and if you'd like information, we do have upcoming camps, so click the link below for check that out. One of the things we always talk about is a very simple principle, and again, we've talked about stand throws, and we did some things, and we showed the angle, what we refer to as setting the angle and setting the stack. Now, sometimes you see coaches and, and people who are teaching, you know, put all your weight on one leg and that's a good cue. We, we, we think that's effective. But one of the things we'll see and why we kind of advocate setting the angle and setting the stack is because we want to understand our alignment points. And sometimes guys will stand on one leg like this, especially when it comes to the glide or some of the throws. So the hip, when they straighten up, they're actually, you're going to notice tilting into the throw a little prematurely. So this is a really simple way to just make sure everything's aligned, the hips are in the right position. And now when we drop, which we call an elevator drop, we'll drop right down into position. So it's setting the angle, setting the stack. This is a really simple thing because we want to see more throwers improving, and we wanna help you with some simple cues that are gonna help do that. Recently, this past week, a heptathlete from Canada that was a really talented female young thrower, U20 athlete, and we went through some basic things, and one of the things was understanding that. So this athlete was setting up and was setting up like this. Now, this position in a stand throw, I think is effective. You can do and get a pretty decent distance on the stand throw. However, if you land in your full throw in this position with momentum, you're gonna be crowding the board. Okay, so one of the things, again, when, when you hit the position and you're practicing, again, we say set the angle, set the stack, and this is gonna teach athletes to counter. And when I have that good angle over the delivery leg and we're countering, that's gonna allow us to feel our movement into our block leg, which is what we want. When we rotate, whether it's rotational shot or glide, we have to be able to move into that block position. So one of the big things is we wanna help a lot of our throwers. Here's a simple check. If you're doing this, you wanna get out of this habit as fast as you can. Set the angle, set the stack. There's gonna be two big tips in this video. So one of the things we're gonna do is, if we have speed and we land in this position, we'll crowd up, we'll hit our block late, and we're gonna inevitably be fouling throws. And so they might be decent throws because you've eaten up more and you're driving out, but the ring is seven foot, not nine foot. So we have to stay in that circle. So one of the core things we do, we, in our system, last year we started in integrating a ton of drill bands and it gives us a ton of feedback. You're gonna see a lot more people using these bands because what they do is it's a really great tool to give you some feedback. It's visual and you can feel where you're at through the throw. We incorporated this a lot and they give us a lot of visual cues and feel cues, a kinesthetic feels. So there's two ways we can show the counterbalance, but we're going to show you the first way. And if you're a member, you'll see inside of our membership, we go through and we break down this a lot more. But one of the things you're going to do is you're going to notice as I stretch, right? This is what a lot of people do. You see this? So they keep their foot and, or they do this and they keep their leg close or they do this. What we want to do is create that stretch from here. So as I set it down, you're going to see the band on this angle. So as I drive up, you'll see how I'm changing the angle from here to here, and that's what's gonna be really critical. So that was one of the first big tips. We want you to set the angle and set the stack. And the second big tip, and we've probably talked about this in another YouTube video, is see, here's the center of the circle. So we're gonna put our foot basically a little bit from the center, and we're gonna set here, and in the glide we like to set here, we create a little separation, and we reach, and you can see how I'm stretching with the band. That's it. What we see is a lot of kids doing, like I said, from this, and you could see we had an athlete that was doing this. And what I was talking about earlier in the video, which I think the bug screwed me up my train of thought, was when I get here, this type of a stand throw will translate. You can get a nice big stand throw because if I'm right here, I can just teach 
and how to drive through the leg. However, if I land in that position on a full throw and I'm here and I have speed, I'll get a nice push, but I'm gonna fly right out of the circle. So it's not a stand throw that mirrors what you need to do in your full throw. One of the core things that you wanna do is when we're putting on something like this, we start here and we create separation and we reach and we're stretching here. You're gonna see how I can get over and now I'm gonna be here. You're gonna see how I'm gonna be able to be on this position, boom. And now I'm gonna be able to pull and really punch in and through the block. And you're gonna notice that you saw the angle of that band changing to this position versus being here. You can see how it's too far forward, here how it's stretched. And this is going to lead you into much better stand throws that correlate to your actual throw. Because as you come through your glide and everybody's here, you wanna see that angle, not this angle. And that is your tip for the day. Okay, so again, hopefully you guys found this video helpful. Like I mentioned earlier, if you have any interest in coming to any throwing chain reaction events from Merite Throws Nation, check the link below. If you are wanting to dive in deep and get into a lot of stuff, check out our uh, membership program, link below as well. And hopefully this tip was helpful. We wanna make sure that you don't miss it. We're getting into that time. We're gonna get closer to the season. So hit that subscribe button, click on notifications. If you have any questions, comment below. We always want hear what you want to see and we'll help you create some videos help answer some of your questions thanks so much and give us a thumbs up and we'll see you on the next video you're going to be crowding the board jesus hold on there's a freaking gnarly ass bee did you hear that thing jesus and this is where I think ultimately this is going to be the most comfortable start style. So if you notice it's separate, position one, two, separation. 